What's up, Wad Prep family? Coach Ben here. This video is different than usual because I'm shooting it on my cell phone. It is 2022, the first week of 2022, and I've just done my first workout of the year here at Wad Prep headquarters. So got done this madness. I did the seven, which is for the CIA seven. It is a hero workout and it is savage. What a way to start the year. But in order to move on to the next year, I wanted to do something special. And what we've done, uh, what the Wad Prep team have done, is we've taken our top tips from 2021 and we put them into a compilation video. So we have, uh, I, we have at least 10, 15 tips, I forget. We have a bunch of tips in this video that have been handpicked from all the videos that we shot in 2021 to help you make sure that you maximize your training in 2022. So if you are ready to do hard things and learn how to get better at this wonderful sport that we all love, then stay tuned, watch these videos, and you will get our best tips from 2021, which you can apply to 2022. And stay tuned until the end of the video, because as usual, I have free stuff I would love to give you. Let's get right into it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have you pick up this PVC pipe, and the first thing I actually want you to do is let's find our grip. So the way that I find my grip is actually just lift one leg so that the bar is sitting in the crease of my hip, and then you wanna have your elbows straight. Yeah, so right there, that's probably about the perfect grip for you. We'll play around with that a little bit. There you go, use that knurly mark as a good hook grip. Nice, and then whenever you're ready, let's just do a wrap, we'll do like a couple. From all the way down? Yep, from all the way down, mid chin. Good, okay, bar drifted, same thing, you kinda of like push the bar out forward, that's very, very common. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do, is the common coaching cue. You're gonna be fine, just do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna have this here as just a mental cue, a mental reminder not to push the bar out forward. Okay. Much better, right? You kept it way closer. Hopefully everybody can see it on camera. Sometimes just adding a PVC pipe where it's like, don't run into this, or you can have them snatch against a wall. Um, or if you wanna sacrifice your body, if I just stand here awkwardly, technically should you be able to snatch if I stand here awkwardly? Try it. <laughs> do it, you can do it. Here, I'll stand slightly off center. Yeah. Just don't hit me though. I'm your coach now. All right, try it. Whenever you're ready. Okay. No, you're ready. Nice. Super close. Right? That was a great rep. All right? Very nice. <laughs> Oftentimes when I see people doing toes to bar, they tend to keep their head down for whatever reason. Instead of keeping your head down, which I think limits the range of motion to get your toes to the actual bar, here's a quick test. Jump on the bar. Try to get your toes to the bar while looking down. I can't do it. When I keep my chin tucked, I physically cannot get my toes to the bar, and I was actually trying. So, if you lift your head up and look at the bar, it actually keeps your head kind of neutral as we tilt our torso back. So it looks kind of like this. If I look up at the bar as I try to engage, I can very easily get my toes to touch the bar. If you're someone that Tarzan swings, so you swing back and forth all the time, chances are you have what I call as a passive kip. So when your toes touch the bar, let's say you get your toes to the bar, you just let your legs fall back down with gravity. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is as soon as your toes touch the bar, I want you to pull your feet down aggressively while driving your head through your shoulders. So I call that an active kip. Rather than being passive and just letting your feet fall, when your feet fall, you start going into what I call that death swing or the Tarzan swing. So instead of getting your toes to the bar and then just letting them relax back down, which puts you into this death swing, instead what I want you to do is as soon as you touch, actively drive your head back through that window. So drive your head into the arc position and pull your feet back behind you. What that does is that prevents you from swinging and getting your, uh, your basically your balance and your kip off center, and it resets you for the next kip because you're pulling yourself into an arch position, which makes it easy to snap back into that hollow and get your kip. So it looks like this. I push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. So here's what you're gonna do. Get a heavy band, again, depending on your ability level and the height of the pull-up bar. You're gonna loop the band, and then from here, you're actually gonna put a PVC pipe through the band. It's so pretty simple. Put a PVC pipe through the band, and then from here, you're gonna sit down. So very similar to that seated pull-up, we're actually, now we have resistance. Rather than pulling ourselves up, now we're pulling the PVC pipe down, or this could be a barbell, it could be whatever you want, but normally I like a, a, a dowel or a PVC pipe with some sort of heavy band. From here, what's cool is I can practice that full range of motion pulling position while also being completely vertical, just like I was doing an actual strict pull-up. Rather than getting your chin above the bar, I want you to think I'm getting it above the horizontal plane. So for me, when I'm doing butterfly chest bar or just butterfly in general, 
I'm trying to get my chin above the bar out here. So right around here is where my chin's actually coming across the bar. So that by the time I actually get to the bar, this plane of the bar, I'm already on my way down. So here's what it looks like in practice. Look, look at where my chin goes over the horizontal plane of the bar. It happens way back here so that my chin is above the bar behind it and then I can fall through. What I want you to practice is just the butterfly movement with your legs, with your arms, practice many butterfly pull-ups. So what that looks like is it looks like this. So I'm here, getting my chin up, falling through. Okay, even if my chin's not getting above the bar, all I'm doing is I'm practicing the motion. I'm practicing the rhythm of the reverse bicycle kick with my legs and the actual butterfly pattern, that oval pattern that happens with my head and shoulders. Eventually, as you get more and more comfortable, you can take those baby butterflies and start to move them higher and higher and eventually get your chin above the bar. So it turns from this, where we're just doing mini butterflies, to eventually you're able to get them just a little bit higher, a little bit slower, and then, then we're doing butterfly pull-ups. Bottom line is you need to spend more time in the bottom. When I would practice front squats, rather than going down below parallel and sta standing, I would focus going all the way down, coming up, back down, and stand. I'm spending a lot more time all the way at the bottom. Or for something like snatches, instead of just doing overhead squats and barely getting below parallel, like maybe here and standing and feeling really wobbly, instead, spend time at the bottom. If you can actually get comfortable hanging out with weight at the bottom of your overhead squat, then when it comes time to actually catch a really heavy snatch, you're gonna be willing to hang out here for a while before you stand it up. It's gonna help you bump up your clean and your snatch numbers. Well, if you paid attention during the CrossFit Games this year, you might have realized that there is a completely different way to use grips. What I want you to do is to throw the grip over the bar and then pinch with your fingers. What's happening here is where I think it's kind of cheating, but it is allowed. Everyone at the CrossFit Games during the heavy uh, chest to bar event, you would notice every single athlete used their grips like this, even if they had finger holes, was well, all they did was they jumped up and they throwed the grip over the bar. So you can see I've just thrown the grip over the bar. I can still wrap my thumb around. Some people don't do that, I always do. But what's happening here is when I throw the grip over the bar like this, it's acting almost like a weightlifting strap where rather than having all of the tension and all of the fatigue happen with my actual fingertips and finger pads gripping the bar, what happens now and what you should feel when you're trying this out is imagine someone's grabbing the grip like this and pulling on your wrist. All of the weight or almost all of the weight of your body is on your wrist and distributed in the, the actual uh, connection mechanism of the grip. You really can lock in and do pull-ups forever because here my grip isn't fatiguing. The only thing that's gonna fatigue is my arms. If you do that, like I said, toes to bar, chest to bar pull-ups, butterfly, anything that doesn't involve the grip moving, aka bar muscle ups, anything that doesn't involve the grip moving will get tremendously better. My favorite drill, I think we're gonna implement this right away. My favorite drill for handstand walks is a spotter handstand walk. Similar to muscle ups, it's one of the best things that you can do is just give someone a little bit of help when they're practicing their handstand walks with a PVC pipe. So he's gonna kick up. I'm gonna be here for you to balance. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna kick up onto me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna start walking and I want you to practice that really small choppy step. Got it. Okay. With my feet leaning against with that. With your feet leaning against that. And I might leave you, right? But gravity's gonna pull you forward, but I will not let you fall. Okay. I'll try not to kick you in the You're good. <laughs> this is why my arms are extended. There you go, I'm here. Nice small choppy steps. There you go. Very nice and relax. Um, so you'd do your wall walk, do your shoulder taps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then kick away from the wall and practice walking. The first way that I like to teach people coordination is something called the penguin clap. So we put the rope down and all you're doing is practicing the jumping that we learned earlier in this video. You're doing a rebounding jump and then you're clapping the side of your hips each time you want to spin the rope. So for single unders, it's gonna look like this. You jump and you clap your hips once. Notice that I'm clapping my hips while I'm off the ground 
because that's when we would spin our rope. Remember, every time we spin the rope, we need to be off the ground or else it's going to hit our feet. So for the penguin claps, you can practice with singles, or if you eventually want to move on to doubles, you can practice and it looks like this. So we're doing two claps while we're in the air, and then when we're on the ground, our hands are separated from our body. Penguin claps are a great way to teach you how to get the right coordination. So all I'm doing is I'm hopping up on the bar and I'm swinging back and forth. So this is what I would call a kip swing. So I'm swinging back and forth, and the two pieces that I want you to know about are the hollow position, which is here, and the arch position, which is here. So a kip swing, I'm just going in and out of a hollow and arch position. A hollow hold on the floor simply looks like this. I'm laying down on the ground, arms above my head, and then what I'm doing is I'm crunching my belly button or squeezing my belly button, trying to squeeze it into the ground, lifting my feet up, lifting my upper body up. So basically I'm engaging my core here, lifting my shoulders off the ground, lifting my feet and lower body off the ground, and then in this position, you'll notice that my core is really, really tight, my body is rigid, this is what the hollow body position is. Then we can switch over to what's called the arch position, which is basically the same exact thing, except I'm laying on the ground face first rather than my butt on the ground. So instead of tightening my, my abs, I'm tightening my lower back, squeezing my glutes, and lifting my legs off the ground, lifting my upper, upper body off the ground. This is the arch position. Some might call this a Superman hold or the Superman position, but this is the arch position. So one thing that we can do, once you're familiar with both of those positions, is to actually practice going in and out of the hollow and the arch. You can then actually practice doing candlestick rolls. So from here, I'm in the hollow, and then boom, I go to my arch. And then from the arch position, I can roll back to hollow. What we're doing is we're learning to manipulate our body using our core. This is what I like to call the mini kip muscle up. And oftentimes it's how I can get people to get their very first muscle up ever get two benches or two boxes or something you can stand on that gets you up and almost, not eye level, but like head level to the rings. This is really important because this is gonna give us a really controlled mini kip. The next thing I want you to do, and actually Travis, if you come on in closer, the next thing I want you to do is to get a false grip. So the false grip, I know normally you would think the false grip is only supposed to be with strict ring muscle ups, but here I actually want you to use it uh, for this mini kip because it's gonna help you get above the rings easier. So with the false grip, all we're doing is taking your wrist, karate chop, okay, so make this bend here, put that bend at the very bottom of the inside of the rings, and then grab the rings, okay? That's the false grip. You should have the meat of your hand, the crease of your wrist above the bottom of the rings, okay? So karate chop, put the crease right at the bottom of the rings, and then grab. That's the false grip. Once you have the false grip, you're standing on your two benches, I want you to lower yourself down to where your arms are fully extended. And then I want you to do a little mini kip. So hollow, arch, up, then that's it. So there you have it, folks. Those are our top tips from 2021. I wanna know in the comments below, what was one tip that you really, really liked that struck a chord with you personally that you are going to work on this year or implement this year in 2022? Leave a comment below and let me know. Next, if you are someone who wants to get more tips like this and wants to get daily program, we have something really amazing. It's called Wad Prep Masters. It's daily workouts. I'm not even a master's athlete, admittedly, and I still follow it. It's fantastic. If you want to learn more and join, uh, we have an awesome trial that you can try out by clicking the link below. Also, if you're someone who wants to work on the skills, let's say you look at this workout, the CIA 7, and you want to do something like, uh, you know, knees to elbow, but maybe like toes to the bar, maybe you're trying to work on your pull-ups, maybe you're trying to work on your handstand push-ups, really any skill movement in the sport of CrossFit, or if you're someone who wants to work on your recovery, you're someone who wants to get better at any skill or, uh, spoiler alert, we also have Olympic weightlifting courses coming out in 2022. If you're someone who wants to work on any of that, then you should check out Watt Prep Academy. It's where you can get all of the Watt Prep courses together for one low annual price. And last but not least, if you're someone who doesn't have two pennies to rub together and you want free training, I want to make sure that my free content is always better than everyone else's paid stuff. So if you go to wattprep.com, you can actually choose some free training guides that I would be honored to send directly to your email. So click the links below or look in the top comments where you can learn more 
about how to get those pieces of content that I mentioned. We got programming, we also have uh, courses to help you learn skills, and then we also have lots of free training. So go grab some of that. I'm looking forward to reading your comments, and as usual, I'll see you next week. By the way, if anyone is in the Denver area or comes through the Denver area and wants to come check out the wonderful Wad Prep headquarters and play with Murphy and Maddie, because uh, they're my dogs and they're in the front office, um, make sure you shoot me a message on Instagram. Maybe we can hit a workout together, or maybe you can be in a Wad Prep video in 2022. See you next week. I love functional fitness. <laughs> Except for when I can't do some of the movements. Because let's face it, there's nothing worse than showing up for a wad and not being able to do anything written on the whiteboard. Okay class, really simple wad today.